I want you to turn your Bibles today to Luke chapter 23. Amen. Luke chapter 23, and we're going to read a few verses from verse 33 is where you will find our text today. And when they were come to a place which is called Calvary. There they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, for they parted his raiment and cast lot. And the people stood beholding him, and the rulers also with them uh, derailed him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin and Hebrew, this is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factor which will hang rail on him, saying, If thou be Christ, then save yourself and us. Hmm. If thou be Christ, then save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him. Say, do it not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing amiss. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, this day, today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. The three crosses on a hill. The three crosses on a hill. It was one of the most dramatic moments in history when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, stood before Pilate and was on trial. There he was surrounded by the cautious Roman soldiers, the hostile religious leader, and this ingenious Roman judge, and an angry crowd. Pilate, the temporizing coward, sought several ways to avoid having anything to do with Jesus. And when he found that he could not get him off his hand, he pulled out some water in a bowl and washed his hands and said he would have nothing to do with this innocent man. So now the trial of Jesus is over. He has been condemned, humiliated, spat upon and scorned. Yes. The crown of thorns have been placed on his head and the old rugged cross on his shoulders. Yes, and now Jesus is led away. The procession of the cross is preceded by a trumpeter to clear the road, then followed by a spokesman announcing the name of the criminal who is being led to the execution. The name of the criminal and the reason for his condemnation were normally written on a board and hung about the neck. Two witnesses of the council which sentenced him to death also accompanied the procession. Since the temple priests had found him accused, they also joined in the procession. Simply because in the book of Leviticus it said, the sin offering should be led outside the city gate, and Jesus was the sin offering. 
But Jesus was not the only one to die that day. There were others to die on the cross with him. So therefore, it was not just one man on the cross, but it was three crosses on a hill. Let us now look at the value of the number three. Strangely satisfying to men down through the centuries has been the number three and the idea of threefold. The number three seems to stand for anything that is solid, real, substantial, complete, and entire. It is the perfect number expressing beginning, middle, and the end. The middle seems to tie the first and the last together. People often use the number three to express how they feel about certain things when they're tired of you. They often say, strike three, and you're out. Some of the most important numbers in the Bible are actually complete numbers, such as three, seven, and 12, and they stand for completeness. Did not the Romans and the Greek mythology suppose the world to be under the rule of three gods, Jupiter, Jupiter, Neptune, and Plato. The conquering Caesar, when he went around to conquer a country, he used these three verbs, I came, I saw, and I conquered. In life, there are three periods, birth, life, and death, which is childhood, youth, and old age. The human body is made up of three substances, flesh, bones, and blood. In time, there are three periods, past, present, and future. In motion, there are three speeds, moderate, slow, and fast. In a book, there are three parts, content, introduction, and conclusion. In water, there are three states, ice, liquid, and steam. In music, there are three things that distinguish tones, pitch, and equality, and loudness. In measurement, there are three dimensions, length, breadth, and thickness. In mathematics, there are three chief signs, plus, minus, and equal. There are three kingdoms that complete all man's knowledge of matter, minerals, vegetables, and animals. There are three functions that express and complete the sum of human capability, thought, word, and deed. And expressing the sum of our knowledge of qualities, there are three degrees, good, better, and best. The number three also plays an important part in the Bible. It appears first in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, 13, and the evening and the morning was the third day. As to God, there are three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. As to the attributes of God, there are three, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omnipotent. Jonah was down in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Jesus was tempted three times by the devil in the wilderness. Jesus was on the cross three dreadful hours. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. Jesus himself raised three people from the dead. There were three people Jesus raised from the dead. Twelve-year-old daughter of Jairus, widow son of the name, Lazarus, brother of Mary and Martha. Isaiah sat in the temple and heard the seraphim cry three times, holy, holy, and holy. The Hebrew canalization was made up of three divisions, the law, the writings, and the prophet. There are three gifts from God, faith, hope, and love. There are three things which our parents saw in the tree that got them put out the house. It was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and desire to make one wise. The river of Jordan was miraculously divided three times. Man has three enemies, and that is the world, the flesh, and the devil. God has three ways of speaking to man. God speaks to man. God speaks 
with man and God speaks through man. These along with many instances of the use of the number three are evidence of its numeral and spiritual significance. The occurrence of the number three is not fanciful, not forced, not foolish. It speaks of the accuracy of God and of its perfection. Now after discussing the number three, I call your attention to three crosses on the hill. But before I discuss what the three crosses are all about, let me first define to you today what a cross is. A cross is an upright post with a horizontal beam fastened across it near the top of which the victim person were executed in the Roman world. These crosses were sometimes made in the form of an X, an I, or a T. It was a Roman way of slow death because the Roman had several ways of punishment. Sometimes they would stone you, they would hang you, they would behead you, boil you in hot water or hot oil, drag you through the streets, or crucify you. The crucifixion was the most common use of the Roman. Reason why crucifixion became popular among the Romans, they really got it from the Persian. The Persians believe that the body is already contaminated and that once you bury a body in the ground, it contaminates the ground. So therefore they did not believe in burying you as we do here. They would hang you on a cross and let your flesh rot and be eaten by the vultures because they didn't believe in burying you to contaminate the earth because the earth gave them all the fertility and the fruits and everything depend on the earth. So therefore, they would put you on a cross or they would bury you in a stone tomb. So the cross has been very popular with the Persian and the Romans got it from the Persian. For example, when Darius conquered Babylon, he put 200 captives to death on crosses. When Alexander conquered Tyre, he put 2,000 captives to death on crosses. So this was an ordinary mode of punishment. Looking deeper at the cross, I see a picture of man. The T-shape looks like a man's body. He's going up toward God and down toward hell at the same time. And that makes him somewhat confused and cross up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the idea, the idea of the cross is an, it should be really explored more and should be exploited more fully. For in time man stands between the past and the future. He is, as it were, facing backward and forward at the same time, at the same moment, stretched between his origin and his fulfillment. Man also lives in space between internal and external world. So it is that man life, social as well as individual, he lives at a crossroad between four fronts, backward toward the past, forward into the future, inward among himself and his feelings, and stretching out toward his fellow man for him or against him. Therefore, he can't go in all direction at one time. So since he can't go in all direction at one time, he ended up crossed up. Because when you see him going up like a cross, he's thinking about heaven. And at the same time, his foot on the earth, he's still in hell. And then going out to his fellow man, he's going to do one thing or the other. He's either going up to heaven or leave his past and help his fellow man. Or he's going up to heaven and still in hell and going out to create enemies. I don't think nobody got that. But look at me as I stand here. I look like a cross. Up toward God. Back toward my past. Out 
to help somebody else. And most time, that's the good side of the cross. But the negative side of the cross, up to God, back in hell, don't know what to do about your fellow man, so you're crossed up and don't know what to do. And that's about where a man is. He's crossed up. Even a circle is complete as it goes all the way around. But a cross doesn't go all the way around. Before you can decide to go out, you're going up. And before you can decide to go up, you're going back. So that makes it crossed up. That's why when you're on the road, you see a cross. And what's so confusing about a cross, you don't know which direction to go. So the decision is on you to go that way or that way. Because it's going always. And that's the way man is. Man is crossed up. When he's going forward, he's looking backward at the same time. When he's going up, he's looking down. He looks as he is going out and he's just the way man is. He's crossed up. He's hung up on his hang up. He's mad at what he knows and then he's mad at what he doesn't know. He has guided missiles in the hands of misguided men. He looks for something and when he gets it, he doesn't like it. He spends money to buy things he doesn't want to impress folk he doesn't like. He's crossed up. Amen. But the mystery behind the cross is strange. It represents death, but at the same time, it brings life. It represents sadness, but it brings gladness. Because God can use the cross. It breaks us to make us. It abuses us in order to use us. It disappoints us to appoint us. It pulls us down so it can send us out. Thank God for our crosses in life, for it takes a cross to show us something. It takes a cross to get you somewhere. It takes a cross to find out who God is. A man never know who God is until he get in trouble. It takes a cross for God to reveal his power and what he can bring you through. Some of you today can say, it was God that made a way for me. How do you know? Because God got me out the mess. And it takes a cross to show you who God is. But it also takes a cross for you to find out who you are. I don't know who you are until you get in trouble. Nobody know how faithful you are until you get in trouble. When you get in trouble and you hold on, then you find it out who you are. But it also takes a cross to find out who your friends are. But when you get a cross on your shoulder, your very friend will turn their back on you when they think you need them. So it takes a cross to find out who your friends are. Don't get mad about your cross. Thank God for the cross. Not only should you thank God for the cross theologically, looking at the cross, it looks like a key. It looks just like a key. So if the cross is a key, put it in the lock and unlock the door. Unlock the door and get God's grace. Unlock the door and get God's power. Take the cross and unlock the door. And if you unlock the door with the key, you'll get salvation. Unlock the door and God will take you to another level. Unlock the door and God will show you what he got on the inside. Unlock the door, take the cross and let it be the key. Thank God for the crosses in life. Yes, there were three crosses on the crosses on that hill that day. There were three trees planted that day, yet bearing fruit. One on the right bearing poison, one on the left bearing bitter loaves, and one in the middle bearing apples of love. There were three men on the cross that day, one dying in sin, one dying to be saved from sin, one in the middle dying for sin. Three men died on crosses outside Jerusalem that day. One made the devil happy, one made Jesus happy, one made God happy. Three men died that ugly day. One died disbelieving, one died pleading, 
and one died reconciling the whole world unto himself. There were three men who died on Calvary that day. One misused the last minute and got hell. One used his last minute and got heaven. One used his last minute and drew heaven and earth both toward God. Three men suffered that Friday. One man was sin in him and on him. One man was sin on him but not in him. One man with no sin in him but because of our iniquity all sin on him. There were three men that caught up with on that day. One died rejecting, one died repenting, and one died drawing all men unto himself. Christ was put to death with two thieves. Two thieves. Two thieves with the Savior? How shameful. That's like a lamb between two wolves. A nightingale of a, with the voice of love between two rattlesnakes. The rose of sherry between two calcus plants. Two thieves and the Savior. Jesus hanging with thieves. The robber said they were thieves. The traveler said they had laid wait and robbed them on the highway, taking their pocketbooks. The homeowner said these men had ramshacked their houses and took away their belongings. The bank said they invaded their building, holding them at gunpoint and told them to hand over the cash. Thieves. Nobody liked thieves. Yes, Jesus was put to death with the worst kind of men. And when they had done all they could do to humiliate him, they put him between these two thieves. And they did it to humiliate him because the worst criminal was always hanging in the middle. They tried to tear him down internally by putting him with these two thieves. But I got news for you. When you put Jesus in the middle and put Jesus in the midst, you were doing just what God sent him here to do. While they thought they were humiliating Jesus, they did not know they were fulfilling God's prophecy. Because Isaiah said he would be numbered among his transgressors. When they put Jesus in the middle, they did just what the gospel is all about. Because God is a missed God. God is always in the business of getting in the middle. God has always been in the business of getting in the midst. If you don't think God can get in the middle and get in the midst, you ought to ask Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. And a Bendigo. Shadrach, Meshach, and a Bendigo said when they put us in the fire, God got in the midst. Daniel said when they put him in the lion den, God got in the mix. Anybody here know he'll get in the mix? Ezekiel said, I was out there in the valley full of dry bones. And God picked him up in the spirit, set me down in the mix of a valley full of dry bones. God would get in the mix. Hallelujah. When they were on the ship, Jesus got in the mix and went to sleep. You don't believe God would get in the mix? Praise God when, the, when they met in the upper room and they were telling Thomas about Jesus had risen from, the, risen from the dead. The Bible said there he appeared in their midst and told Thomas, look at my hand. Look at my feet. Look at my side. I'm not dead. I'm alive. That's God getting in the midst. You don't think God will get in the midst? Ask John the Revelator. John said, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And I saw one with eyes like balls of fire. Feet like polished bread. Hell like lamb wood. Walking in the midst. God to get in the midst of your trouble. God to get in the midst of your sickness. God to get in the midst. And when they put him in the midst, they did just what I needed them to do. Show that God can get in the midst of whatever you're going through. Let us examine these two men hanging on the cross now with the Savior. One on the right and one on the left. 
the man on the right, this thief on the right, look at him talking to Jesus. If you be son of God, come down. Come down and save yourself and us. Wow. This is amazing. They want this man to come down. It's called a challenge to come down. Is anybody here doing what God wants you to do? If you're doing what God told you to do, don't come down. There's always somebody trying to pull you down. Every time you try to do what the Lord tell you, there's always somebody on the cross saying, come down. But I made up in my mind, I'm not coming down. I'm doing a great work and I can't come down. They told Jesus, come down, prove yourself. You don't have to prove nothing when you're a child of God. You don't have to prove to nobody that you know you know the Lord. When you know the Lord and you know God is able and you know what he's done for you, don't you come down. Don't give up your testimony. Don't give up your praise just to please some folk. They don't know nothing about your sorrow. They don't know nothing about your hard time. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not coming down. Now look at somebody behind, you don't know me. So don't tell me to be quiet in church. When I've been sick on my bed, when I've been down to my last dime, and you want me to come down, I'm not coming down. I can hear Jesus saying, I can hear Jesus saying on the inside, why in the world you want me to come down? I've already come down. I left the shine in copes of glory. I left my throne in glory. I left my crown in glory. And I came down and was born on a silent night in Bethlehem. I'm already down. I came down enough. I'm not coming down now. I'm going up. Up, up, up. Can't come down. Oh, that's just when you do the good work, folk might hurt your feeling and say ugly things to you when you're coming in the door. But don't you come down. Oh, mothers, they may lie on you, criticize you, but don't come down. Oh, deacons, when you know you're doing what God said do, don't let nobody cause you to come down. Oh, preachers, when you know God called you and God put his hand on you, don't come down. Because that's what the crowd said. The crowd told Jesus to come down. And if he'd come down, would it have made any difference? No. Nope. Because he did something greater than that. He rose. And they still didn't believe it. Had no time to come down. I don't care what folks say about you. People, you can't go by what people think. Some of you are waiting on people approval. The reason why some of you come down is what folks said. And they humiliated you. You're trying to be a crowd pleaser. So you try to come down to meet that qualification. You're worried about what your friend think of you. But that's not the way it's supposed to operate. Don't let the crowd control you. Don't care what they say. Don't care what they do. When you know you God's child, don't you come down. Let them talk about you. But you know when some folk come to church and they go home, they don't eat the food they cook. They ball the choir. They stew the deacons. They use the other member for tall salad. And they barbecue the preacher. I'm not coming down. I got a great work to do. This man was not thinking. Listen to him. If thou be the son of God. Is there any ifs about it? If I'd have been standing there, I would have told him, man, ain't no ifs about this. What you mean by if you be the son of God? Come here and win. It ain't ifs about it. No, ain't no ifs about it. 
He used me one time. Hallelujah. And I went out and got Jonah. I was just, I caught him like the speed cops on the road. And he was running from God. And he used us to shake that ship and fire old Jonah. It's fast asleep. Ain't no ifs about it. He is the son of God. Come here, water. Is there any ifs about it? No. Pharaoh's army got in the way and tried to kill God's people. And they got up to the Red Sea. And he told me, skip back, boy. And made a route 66. And I let the children cross on dry land. Ain't no ifs about it. Come here, water. He is the son of God. I didn't want to switch over one time. But one day he looked at me. And H2 looked at O. And O looked at H2. And flipped over and became wine. Ain't no ifs about it. He is the son of God. Ain't no ifs. Ain't no ifs. I know he's the son of God. Sad thing about this man. Here's a man dying and then challenging Jesus. Listen at this. He already in trouble. And instead of praying for salvation, he up here cursing Jesus out. Here's a man sick, cursing out the hospital. Here's a man dying, cursing out life. Here's a man broke, cursing out the bank. Here's a man homeless, cussing out a house. Here's a man lonely, cussing out company. Here's a man thirsty, cussing out a well. Here's a man lost, cussing out the map. Here's a man blind, cussing out the dog that leaves him. Here's a man walking and don't know no car. Here's a man got a car half running and don't want to tune up. Here's a man hungry and don't want nothing and cussing out the grocery store. Here's a man ignorant, cussing out the school teacher. He listened to the crowd. Here's a man already down telling folk to come down. You know why some folk want you to come down? They're already down. You know why some folk want you to leave that church? They're already out. You know why some folk don't like you happy? Because they're not happy. Most folk who want you to get out come down already out. Misery love company. And why listen to somebody down and they down? The folk who were telling Jesus to come down were down themselves. I don't need nobody telling me about money and you broke. Do bad by myself. <laughs> Another good thing. But let's see. I think you said enough about this man. He doesn't know a good thing when he sees it. He doesn't know who he's beside. But listen at the other man on the other side. The dying thief. This penitent thief on the left side. The right side man cussing Jesus out. The left side man talking him up. Isn't that a picture of life? I don't care how many folk reject you. Somebody will receive you. I don't care how many folk don't like you, somebody like you. There's an upside and there's a downside. There's always two sides and one side wouldn't mean nothing if you didn't have the other. What would up mean if you didn't have a down? What would out mean if you didn't have an in? What would tall mean if you didn't have a short? What would ugly mean if you didn't have a pretty? There's always two sides to life. Somebody will reject you. But just because somebody cuss you out, don't you get mad with everybody. Somebody will be your friend. I don't care how many folk are working against you. You got a friend somewhere. Somebody always against you. But God is for you. And if God is for me, who cares? Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to be for me. Somebody is. Let's look at this man who said on the left. First thing he did, he cussed out the man on the right. 
You know what I always learned a long time ago as a pastor? As a pastor, I tell young preachers, don't worry about fighting people back when they're after you. If you keep quiet, your friends will speak for you. Sometimes your friend can't speak up and fight for you because of your big mouth. But if you shut up and don't say nothing, you got some folk going to speak for you. And this is exactly what went on. This man trying to hurt Jesus' feeling, and the other man cussed him out. Here's a sinner cussing out a sinner. <laughs> and how come a sinner can cuss out a sinner? Because they both know the same thing. You can't trick a liar when a liar know a liar. You cannot, a thief cannot hide from another thief. Because they both steal. A liar know a liar because they both lie. <laughs> So when a man doing the same thing, you know he can predict your moves. This man knew what he was up to. And he looked over and told the man on the right, you ought to be ashamed of yourself as I pray the paraphrase for you. Who in the world are you to stand up here and I challenge this man when both of us are getting our just reward? This man had done nothing wrong. He's an innocent man. And here we are up here for what we deserve. He doesn't deserve it. I would have told him, shut up. <laughs> Some of you all need to shut up. You know, it's bad to be sick and cussing folk out. It's bad. I worked in the hospital and a man was in a wheelchair cussing me out and begging me to put him in the bed. I started to drop the Negro. Here you bet you the one can't walk. You ought to be saying, how you doing? Cussing me out. Where you coming from, little old rascal? I'm big enough to put you up. If some folk look like the more the closer to death they are, they ought to be getting better. Some of y'all ought to be half right, old as you are. You already got one foot in the grave. And one out the grave. Now what you doing walking around here trying to be a hooshin' mama? Get on gracefully. Got an 80 year old man around here talking about what's up dog. You don't even know what the dog is. You don't need to be around right here smoking no joint. You need to be trying to get it right. You already have dead. Here's a man dying and don't know how to act dying. When you have dead, you ought to be going to church. When you know you ain't got law, you ought to be praying. But it's amazing how some folk can be sick and getting sicker. In other words, it's bad to be sick and making folks sick. What I like about this number I done, this man on the left, watch this. He did not allow the man on the right to influence him. How many folk have lost their home listening to somebody on the other side? How many preachers have lost their church listening to a preacher who don't have no church? How many of you lost your position in a church listening to somebody on the other side? How many of you lost a job? Listen to somebody on the other side. You got to learn how to stop listening to folk on the other side of the cross and pay attention to the man in the middle. That other side will mess you up. And most people don't know how to deal with peer pressure. Young people, don't pay any attention to the man on the other side. He already died. Don't pay no attention to somebody young like you. You're in the same boat. You need to talk to somebody been through something. You need to talk to somebody who can tell you something. Stop listening to folk on the other side. Praise the Lord today. Then this man also said to that man on the other side, don't you feel God? Don't you feel God? That's the problem in the church today. People don't feel God. 
If you fear God, you will pay your tithe. You ought to fear God to come in the same church and don't want to act right. You ought to fear God. I ain't got no problem with y'all speaking in tongues if you quit lying in English. I say it's all right to speak in tongues if you quit lying in English. You ought to fear God. How is somebody going to walk down here talking about I'm under the anointing and keeping God's money? How the world you gonna say you in church? And I got a problem with folk who say we well, hold church late and come late. Most of y'all were not in here when those deacons start praying, and you were the one hollering a whole church late, and you came late. Uh oh, where that band aid at? I need to pass it around right now. You ought to feel God. Hallelujah. Ah, look at what the man said. My time caught up with me now. This man, the good thief, the penitent the thief, not only told this man, feel God, but this man admitted that he was a sinner. He said, we are getting our just reward. So that I tell you right now, don't worry about that. You ought to be glad that some folk are willing to admit that they're wrong. I like this about the thief on the left. He said, we're getting our reward because of what we've been doing. We're sinners. We're robbers. We're thieves. What makes him a good thief? He was willing to admit that he was a sinner. Now, some church folk think they're a good sinner. Some folk say, I live a good life. Yeah, you're good, but you're good for nothing. Some folk think they're all right with God. And I don't need nobody to tell me I need to be born again. But you ought to admit the fact that you're a sinner. Before we can get some of y'all saved, we need to first get some of y'all lost. Because too many of you think you already have arrived where you're going. You need to first look at yourself and say, I'm nothing but a sinner. I don't have no God on my side. And you need to say, I'm a sinner. Everybody in here got dirty laundry. I don't care how good you think you live. Look at your neighbor and say, you got a ring around the collar. Everybody got some ring around the collar. Some of us talk about what other folk do, but we don't tell folk what we do. You got a problem somewhere. We're all sinners saved by grace. Quit going around with that self-righteous stuff. Talking about how holy you live. You're setting yourself up for failure because you are still in the flesh. We are all sinners saved by grace. Amen, amen. Old folk quit going around talking about young folk and talking about how bad they are because we were bad too. We may not want to tell it like it is, but some of us were disobedient too when we were young people like young folk. I often said, no, we did not go in hotels, but we went up under some houses. Come on with me here now. We did things too. No, they didn't talk about crack in my day, but they talked about LSD. <laughs> we did some things too. No, we didn't wear no baggy pants, but that thing was so tight on your behind with them jeans you used to wear, with them bell bottoms. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. We did some things too. Every man has sinned and everybody has done something wrong. Hallelujah. But I thank God this man, he admitted that he was a sinner. And the next thing about this man, while he was hanging on the cross, he called Jesus Lord. He said, Lord, Lord, when you come to your kingdom, I want you to remember me. Praise God today. He called Jesus Lord. I wonder, can you call him Lord this morning? Is he your Lord? Is he your Lord? The Lord is my Lord. And the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm glad to call him Lord. Because Jesus owned me. A Lord is an owner. 
and my God owns my life. He's called Lord. Can you call him Lord this morning? Can you call him Lord this morning? Because if you don't honor him as Lord this morning, he won't be able to honor you. Jesus is telling us today, you call me master, but you serve me not. You call me father, but you obey me not. You call me mother, but you honor me not. You call me love, but you desire me not. You call me the way, but you follow me not. You call me fam, but you trust me not. You call me rich, but you ask me not. You call me noble, but you believe me not. You call me bread, but you eat me not. You call me water, but you drink me not. You call me a rose, but you smell me not. You call me just, but you fear me not. Am I right about it? Praise God today. He said, Jesus, you are my Lord. And then he called him when you come into your kingdom. Lord, I want you to remember me. Remember me. He had sense enough to know God is a king. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of Lord. He said, your kingdom, that is, I know you're my king. Is there anybody here? No, Jesus is a king. Ain't God all right? Another thing about this man, he knew Jesus was his only hope. He didn't have nowhere else to go. Ain't God all right? He knew he didn't have nowhere to turn. Praise God today. He knew that there was nothing behind him but ashes. Nothing before him but fires. Nothing behind him but error. Nothing before him but terror. Nothing behind him but gloom. Nothing before him but doom. Nothing behind him but a desert. Nothing before him but a valley. He knew it wasn't nowhere else to go. He said, Lord, when you come to your kingdom, I want you to remember me. Is there anybody here this morning? No, there ain't nowhere else to go. If you don't have Jesus, I'm getting a little happy this morning. I don't know where else to go. He said, Lord, when you come to your kingdom, Lord, remember me. I don't know who you are this morning, but I want God to remember me. When I come down to the end of my journey, I want God to remember me. He said, remember me. Everybody want to be remembered. When you die, you got a tombstone and got your name up there, you want to be remembered. You got loved ones, pictures, and the names in the windows of the church because somebody wanted to be remembered. When I get old and feeble, and old Fleming came get up the steps, and I walk in this church, and I'm an old man on a stick, I don't want y'all to forget me now. I want you to honor me and say, here come the pastor. I want to be remembered. Jesus said, remember me, and often as you meet, Drink this wine and eat this bread in remembrance of me. Anybody here know God got good memory? Anybody here know God got good memory? I can hear that thief saying, if you can remember the ten lepers that cried for mercy, I know you can remember me. If you can remember a woman caught in the act and let her go while they were about to stone her, I know you can remember me. If you can remember a woman that had five husbands and you gave her living water, I know you can remember me. If you can remember Peter when he was drowning and cried, Lord, save me. I know you can remember me. Somebody here ought to start remembering. Somebody here, the reason you can't get happy, you forget too soon. You forgot about how God made a way out of no way. You got a poor memory. If some of y'all could remember, you wouldn't be too happy. You wouldn't be too proud. You shout this morning. Somebody said, what you shouting about? Look at your neighbor said, neighbor, I remember when I didn't have what I got now. I remember when I had nowhere to turn. I remember who picked me up, turned me around. And I remember how good God is. That's why I got up and came on the church. Because I remember who did it for me. Jesus said, this day, this day, this day, that's 
to be with me in paradise. Anybody here know he's a this day God? Jesus is a this day God. He didn't say not tomorrow, but this day, this day, I should be with me in paradise. Jesus will give it to you now. You don't have to wait until you get to heaven. You can be saved this day. Ain't God all right? This day, give me my daily bread. This day, give me that house. This day, give me that miracle. This day, God can do it right now. Right now. Look at your neighbor. Go tap somebody on the shoulder and tell them God can save you this day. Tell somebody God can feed you this day. Tell somebody God can heal you this day. This day, I should be with me in paradise. When Jesus went on up to heaven, he had a thief by the hand. And I could hear Abraham, either than Jacob, running up to the thief, looking at the thief. Abraham said, how you get here when I had to give up my boy on a mountaintop? How did you get here? I could hear Jonah said, how you get up here? And you've been stealing. And I had to run from God and learn my lesson in the belly of a well. I could hear the thief said, I don't know how you all got here. But let me tell you how I got here. I prayed and he heard my prayer. I called him and he asked a prayer. I didn't pray no long prayer. I prayed a short prayer. You don't have to pray a long prayer. You can pray a short prayer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. That's all you got to say. Anybody here know when the thief, when the thief cried out. Now watch this here. When Jesus was on the cross, he didn't say nothing to nobody much. But when a thief started crying for mercy, he started talking. He started talking. He started talking. The other thief that challenged Jesus, he didn't say nothing. But when the other thief prayed for salvation, God started talking. Anybody here know when you pray and pray right, God will start talking. Anybody here know if you call him, God will start talking. Stay on your knees. Tell God all about my trouble. Anybody here know prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. And I can tell you today, he'll save you. He'll save you. Now do me one more thing. I want you to get out your seat and go tell your neighbor, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad he's saved me. Tell somebody, you're looking at a child of God. I'm saved, saved in my hands, saved in my feet, saved in my body, saved in my mouth, saved in my hearing, saved in my giving, saved. Thank God, all right. God saved me. Look at your neighbor and say, God did it. Look at them, say them. God did it. I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle. You know how I made it? God did it because prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. I'm here today because prayer changes things. Anybody here made it? Because prayer changes things. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, hey, oh yeah, it's a God somewhere, it's a God somewhere, oh yeah, won't he ask the prayer, oh yeah, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, he's able
somebody right now that I'm talking about shooting or serious. Have you ever been in a situation you prayed and asked other folk to hear you and they didn't hear you? You ever ask somebody and try to tell somebody about something you're going through and look like they wouldn't hear you? But when you went to Jesus and told him he heard you, then just spin around three times and say, he heard me. That's who heard me. Some day. 
trophies all of our trophies everything I got one of these old days I got to lay it down but one thing I do know when I got to come down to the river Jordan I know to clean oh clean oh clean oh clean I'm going on home. I'm going on home. When it's all over, I'm going on home to get my mama, 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 cry. We'll open the doors of the church to you. Open the door of the church to you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. You need it. He'll hear you. Come on to Jesus. 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 Right now. If you know you don't know him, listen. He's waiting. This man didn't even get a chance to go to the water to be baptized. He didn't have no time to go to a church. God heard him just hanging there. And some of you all need to know you just hanging there. And you know you just hanging there. But why are you hanging there? You got a friend who been there with for you. And he know your pain. He know the cross you bear, he bore it. Why don't you trust him? Come on right now. Son of man, come to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. Trust. You know why you ought to come? He'll save you. Come on, Come on, help me say it. Now, right now.